Are you feeling the pressure, boy? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's something really different being here again now. I don't know if it's because we try it in English or if it's because we try it just again and are unused to making these podcasts now. But yeah, I'm feeling the pressure. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just here to have a conversation, so I'm not really I'm not really feeling any pressure to be honest. It's no well, it's kind of a pressure having it in English because we used to have this podcast in Norwegian. Yeah, but um, looks like we will have to uh, uh, by popular demand <laughs> we will have to switch over to uh, to the language of the Brits. <laughs> language of the of the internationals um, <laughs> so we yeah we used to have this uh, podcast in Norwegian um, very very fun very good times but want to try a different path try to um, in- internationalize the language a oh, bit more. I'm so British right now I actually have a cup of tea <laughs> you actually have a cup That's, of tea uh, I have a whole I flask of Pepsi so I think I'm American well oh, you're a British yeah that's probably true <laughs> yeah. oh, well, love me country love me country I wife <laughs> alright so we're back you know brother is unbreakable it's um, this is Chronologically, the eight, uh, chron- chronologically is the 18th episode. Um, oh, actually, <laughs> actually, this is the 18th episode. But um, but we're starting a new, starting fresh um, as two English boys. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. we hit F five on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we refreshed. did. We refreshed. Uh, so yeah, who are you, man? I don't know who you are. I just came in the door and yeah. Uh, uh, you gotta present yourself. You know? like, uh, pretend that I just entered the door. Like, well, how would you? How would some, you? some of these pens. Some of these pens. <laughs> yeah. Motherfuckers. Yeah. Um, so my well, my online name is Spiham. S P E H A M. We can just go with that. If yeah. You don't wanna I'm, get doxxed. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm a struggling artist. Yeah. On Twitter and on Instagram and. Uh, yeah, if you want to see my stuff, you can hit me up there. Um, that's me. That's who I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we both live in Oslo. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Who are you? Where can where can we see your stuff, man? Oh, I also have a YouTube channel, actually. Oh, what's it called? Uh, Spiham. Good thing. Yeah. Go check it out. He uh, he just uh, made a, a vi- just made a video. Uh, he, he made a video some while back about a topic we're gonna go much more into depth with today. Uh, but uh, make sure to uh, go and check out his channel because you know it's good stuff. I have more shit planned. I know I haven't been the most uh, diligent <laughs> with my uh, work ethic. But <laughs> diligent? Oh. The cup of tea is really getting to your head. <laughs> Old chap. You haven't been working quite so much as you should have, I do think. Uh, no, I have, I have like five videos I want to make. Oh, god damn. Um, but I just haven't worked on it. Yeah. Because, you know, life and stuff. Life takes time. Yeah, that's my excuse, yeah. Yeah, life is the most unproductive shit ever. And we always got to do that in front of our the things we will be, we want to be productive with. It's a daily grind and you don't mm-hmm. even get a cool gear set yeah. at the end. Yeah, what the fuck is this breakfast side quest? I do it every day. Resets every morning. Um, yeah, no, so I'm uh, I'm uh, Nick. Uh, like, Nikolai is my real name, but uh, Nick is much more simpler uh, to say. Um, I'm known uh, here on uh, the channel you're probably watching this on. If you're watching it from another channel, this is not me, but someone who pirated <laughs> my, my the yeah, podcast. It's pretty good. Um, I am currently pursuing a little radio career at the side, uh, so you can listen to me every Tuesday at 3 uh, p.m. on Radio Metro for the people who want to hear Norwegian gibberish with music in between. Um, and uh, other than that, I'm a struggling writer. Trying to write my own book. You should also maybe say the name of this YouTube channel. Yeah, Nini's Bizarre Adventure. That's where we originate from. Yeah. That's, uh, if you if you hear this in any other place, yeah. uh, you're getting scammed. <laughs> yeah, you're getting scammed. And I would click off this site right now. But hey, listen to the podcast first. And then click off. If you paid money for this, yeah. then good for you. Yeah, but yeah, give me the guy's email. I need that money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, 
Yeah, we are. And and also, maybe the most important fucking thing of all, we're brothers. <laughs> we should probably mention that for them. Yeah, we're brothers. They're by the name Brother is Unbreakable. And here we are. Introduction done. Now we can actually start. Now we can actually start. Now what do you want to start with? What do you want to talk about? So, what I want to talk about today is something that has been on my mind uh, a lot lately. When I think about what to do in this podcast, I've been constantly having this uh, thought of, God, I want to talk about the Final Fantasy XIV journey. Because this is something we mentioned in our the Norwegian version of the podcast that um, that we um, produced a year ago. And you talked about your experience with starting the game. And I was there like the, the non-MMO fan criticizing it, being like... <laughs> oh, <you're right. laughs> I don't know. You were having a lot of issues with that. Yeah, and I think most people do. And that's also why I want this video to be kind of an introduction to why how we also got converted to the MMO. You may be. I was <laughs> I was scared of the MMO life. I've I've been like playing uh, World of Warcraft for a long time. Yeah. And I, I I knew myself when I was playing MMOs. I was kinda like Yeah, not my best. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I didn't really like the grind. I didn't I didn't have any fun with MMOs. You didn't? No, not really. Like the the journey to the end game was, was okay. Yeah. But the end game in itself was very, very boring, very um very time consuming. I didn't like be feeling the pressure of it. No. Um But Final Fantasy fourteen is quite different. So let's first establish what what is Final Fantasy. I think you can take this this section oh god yeah okay well <laughs> in short terms <laughs> in short terms yeah this game <laughs> okay and final fantasy 14 is <laughs> final fantasy is a, um well this is coming from someone who isn't a final, fan final fantasy fan yeah because i i didn't like final fantasy until very recently where um uh, there's a there's a video on my channel uh talking about Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. Which is all the NES versions, right? It's all it's all the, the 2D games. Yeah. Um, because I was going through them, because I, I, I have always heard that Final Fantasy was so great, mm -hmm. it was so good, and oh my god, you gotta play them. Yeah. It's revolutionary. So I went back and I played every entry, which... Actually, surprisingly, few people have them. So I gotta ask myself: Is this series really that good? <laughs> yeah. um, I love how they everyone has been bugging you about something. So to actually just do it to know what they're what they're talking about, you just do it more than them. You just play the whole thing. Well, you gotta one up them. <laughs> yeah. You no. You can't. You, you can't. So next be... time you meet them, you're like, "But did you really like the job system in FF Five? <laughs> You see, I have a little bone to pick with uh, with the mimic class. You see, um, yeah, you got you got to show who's submissive and breedable in this conversation. You can't. Uh... Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, you gotta establish the establish the dominance yeah, establish as soon dominance, as possible. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, Final Fantasy is it started in the eighties. Uh, Square Enix, um, famously. No wait, was it Square? Enix at the time it was Square Soft, right? Square, S Square Soft. Square. Um, I think so. Yeah, it started out with Square and it became Square Enix around the time when Final Fantasy Six it, it, was a thing. It, it, I think it was uh, uh, Square Soft was Final Fantasy. No, it was Kingdom Hearts. Square Soft. I remember Kingdom Hearts One being Square Soft, and then Square Enix was the name after that. I so think. they literally took that long. But that Square theme, I uh, the Square team. I I don't know if they were responsible for the the early no Final yeah. Fantasies. I know they they became involved later, but mm -hmm. I think that they were just main house Nintendo. Yeah. Well, maybe Square, maybe Square. Uh, anyways, it was the studio's uh, last ditch effort. Yeah. To make it, uh, they they were bankrupt basically. Okay. And so they had like one one final idea they wanted to put out there. <laughs> one final idea. One final <laughs> fantasy. Yeah. No, that's where the name come from. It is. Yeah, I think so. That. They 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 put all their money in one basket, 
And I went like, well, if this doesn't do it, then we're bust. Do or die, basically. Do or die. Yeah. Uh, and it was a massive hit. A great, a great game. Because it kind of took the the very, very freshly RPG uh, play style in, in general, which was really new at that time, and kind of made it into the, the whole RPG party with different classes, right? And they kind of defined the genre of it. Well, yeah, it, the, the the difference between JRPG and RPG becomes very apparent. Where yeah. RPG is where very heavy, like you can you choose your own adventure. Yeah, you, like you actually role play. King's Quest. Well, not really. King's Quest is like a point and click. Yeah, okay, but, yeah. But I, I mean, I mean more like tabletop RPGs, like yeah. Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. Yeah. And JRPGs became becomes this like you're you're following the story, mm -hmm. a very heavy story. Uh, with um, the the choices comes in the form of like battle mechanics and roles and stuff. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy One doesn't have a lot of that. Doesn't have a lot of story. Doesn't have a lot of anything really. Uh, it's not that good of a game. No, actually, <laughs> it's quite it's quite boring and quite bad. It is uh, today. But at that time, at that time, I yeah, I could see it being like one of the one of the best games of that time. Yeah. Um, so that's that's how it started, the Final Fantasy uh, thing. Yeah, and then it kept going with uh, a terrible game, <laughs> uh, and then it kept going with uh, a good game with a terrible ending, and then it kept going with uh, a game that, sorry. Right. Oh, the second one. No, the fourth one. The fourth one. Okay, okay. So the second one. Yeah. Oh wait, huh? <laughs> Final Fantasy two. Yeah. Is Final Fantasy four. Oh, because Final Fantasy IV in Japan became the second American one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Jesus Christ. That's always messes with my brain. So so for, for Western audiences, yeah. Final Fantasy was always great. Yeah. Yeah, because you didn't experience two yeah, and three. Yeah, you get one, and then you got two, and yeah. then the, the third one is the, the Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. It's the third one we got. Yeah. So like, one, two, three. Oh, great game. Yeah, great yeah. Great, yeah. Fucking, great trilogy. Fucking unbelievable. <laughs> oh my God. Um, uh, so I went, I went through that, and and after that, I I will say, I well, not to spoil my own video here, no, but I will say I did become a fan of Final Fantasy after that. Yeah. Um, but I didn't start out that way. But it, the game still has um has that magic, has that charm to pull you in and actually deliver on some some of the stuff that people say. Yeah. But uh, when I'm, I feel kind of gaslit by Final Fantasy. Okay, why? Because uh, I, I showed the video to multiple people, yeah. and they said, "Yeah, oh yeah, the common consensus is actually uh, what you said. Yeah, you're pre you're pretty on the ball. Pre people are pretty uh, agree with you a lot." Yeah, and I'm like, "That's fucking weird." Because three and five wasn't here when they were not available to us. Yeah, when uh, and those are the games I like. Oh, but still, people still agree with you. People, people say that oh, you, your opinions—they're uh, actually reflective of most of the community. And I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck you, motherfucker! You didn't play three and five. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously yeah, yeah, it's obviously just a a very generic viewpoint. Well, you've gone more in depth than they would imagine you to do. Um, I just feel. I just feel kind of like people are being disingenuous about the whole thing. Like yeah. Final, Final Fantasy is the the good Final Fantasy games are the games we didn't get. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Except uh, for except for six. Yeah, and and after six, it really tumbles forward to become one of the biggest genres in the world, being best selling and innovative in ways the nineties could never imagine, and uh, so on and so forth. We have great titles as for Final Fantasy seven, eight. Uh, I don't know ten. if it's great. I've heard I haven't played that one. I I heard it's uh, <laughs> didn't hear great things about it. Oh really? Okay, I thought I one of Which the big you ones. You see, like Final Fantasy, in my mind, it has more stinkers than it has actually bangers. Okay, it's so fucking weird that people. But when you have a series of almost sixteen games, no, 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 way more, twenty games at least, because of all the side games, thirteen has come out like four times. Fuck this. <laughs> but like when you have a, a, a genre a, a franchise of 20 or 16 video games of course most of them is gonna be bad is what most people would think 
But you know, you think like, yeah, they have to be good to make this this money. Yeah. Right. No. Dude, Hollywood. It's not usually good to make money. We know that already. It's been established. Well, doesn't Marvel. It, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Marvel. Uh, like the Halloween franchise. Hey, dude, no. Michael Myers. Dude, no, 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 that no, franchise no, no, no. was like two good movies, and I didn't see the second good one. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, no. Uh, the first ones are good, and the rest is. Uh, but hey, actually, a good segue to talk about Halloween. It's Halloween, and it's Halloween time. Yay! Yeah. Fun yeah. Fancy. Uh, <laughs> well, what a cool, what a cool time to be alive. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Never, or not? Never, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. What a cool time to be dead. <laughs> oh, great time to be a ghost. Oh wow! Uh, but yeah, okay. So we we um, follow the journey into the the the, the final Phantom Rush. <laughs> I almost said. Okay, so a friend of mine pitched me uh, Final Fantasy XIV, and yeah. it was like, dude, you gotta get on this, this is fucking great, yeah. you gotta, you gotta go, go join um, the hype train, Shadowbringers, the greatest expansion of yeah. all time, and I'm like, you know, no, that we want. it's an MMO, I'm not, I'm not doing that, yeah. go fuck yourself, <laughs> and, and I was already in the middle of the the journey of um, like one to six. Yeah. And um, so I finally I finally caved in, and I was like, okay, let's let's give it a shot. Yeah. He's talking a lot about this shit. I remember we had a party, and I was like creating my character. Oh yeah. That's while we right. had while we had the party because. Uh, this friend of, of of ours that that you mentioned and uh, a couple more have been uh, like a a, a our, recurring squad when it comes to playing online video games together. It's our Discord group. It's basically. our Discord group. Yeah, it's a um, and we're basically gonna mention some of their names here and there, but just know that this group is an established little group of of five. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, one of them uh, uh pitched. Final Fantasy XIV to you, and you started playing it. Uh, later, after you had experienced Final Fantasy XIV uh, at, at this point, you pitched it forward to me. And I, the closest I had gotten to an MMO was Lord of the Rings Online, which is maybe, maybe what would happen if you shit on a screen. I, I think they call that Rings of Power. Oh yeah, that's the yeah yeah. The that, <laughs> yeah, that's, so. yeah, that's true. They they shot they shit twice on a screen. Yeah, that's um, true. so no, Lord of the Rings Online isn't that bad, is it? It isn't that bad, but it's just it's a simple version of World of Warcraft, and World of Warcraft is already pretty simple. So well, it didn't used to be, but yeah, yeah. Um, but Final Fantasy fourteen is much much more complex and well, i would soon soon learn that um, I, I would actually say that final fantasy 14 is actually even simpler and yeah, that's why it works yeah i guess no it's i think it's a difference between simple no co complex and efficient yeah, f 14 is efficient yeah. while wow is simple but inefficient everything takes time everything takes much more resources than it needs while in f 14 you can just queue into a trial wherever you are, a boss fight. Just do the raid then and there, be on with it, and continue on to new good content. Yeah. Um, so I was introduced to this game as well. Not very positive because I don't like... My, my brother has usually always um, had good things you have pushed on me, and I've been always criti cri critical towards it, and then I've learned to enjoy it. Uh, yeah, man, fuck Gurren Lagan. Yeah, fuck Gurren Lagan. Holy fuck. Wow, what a bad anime. <laughs> Terrible. Um, but, and this one was also one of them. And, and maybe even stronger, because, you know, it's an MMO. It's, an, it's a time investment, I know. No one likes to be recommended an MMO. No. Uh, so, and especially not if you haven't played them. And, yeah, so, so I sat down... I made this goofy-looking character with a pompadour-like Josuke from uh, JoJo. Yeah. And, like I took nothing seriously, and I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm ready to try this out, but I'm not gonna commit to this." <laughs> but last famous last words. Yeah. So okay, so let's now we have established our connection to FF14. What started FF14 with? What's we we gotta get into that as well, because FF14 as an MMO. 
Um, How they start well, comes in expansions and patches, and the first yeah. ever release patch of Final Fantasy XIV, also known as 1.0 because it's the first version, yeah. was a train wreck without fucking uh, yeah. You know that um, so as a small aside, like in in 1.0, yeah, in Final Fan- the original Final Fantasy XIV, um, you had to like. Uh, take in mind, um, keep in mind when you were crafting. Yeah, you had to keep in mind which way you were facing to make sure that you got the correct like uh, crafting buff. From like maybe maybe the wind was blowing from the west, so you had to like. What the fuck is this CFP looking ass thing? I, terrible. Why, <laughs> Jesus? Terrible. And you can you can watch footage from 1.0 on YouTube, and it, it looks like a completely different game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, basically, it looks totally uh, different from anything I played, at least. And it was a train wreck, and everyone agreed. Everyone agreed that this game is fucking trash. It was so bad that the team had to go up on stage under a, a press conference and then publicly apologize. Ooh, that's fucking. That's modern throwing tomatoes. Oh yeah, they could. Yeah. They could have been like placed in the stocks. Yeah, basically. legit. That is. Oh god. Um, so. Uh, what happened was that uh, like th- there were even motion capture cutscenes in FF14. Oh, there's one. There's one. No, there's only yeah, one. Well, okay. Well, no, uh, all the all the cutscenes were motion captured. Yeah. Uh, which led to them having like two cutscenes. Because that that car. But man, those those cutscenes are pretty fucking good. They're fucking good. They're pretty fucking cool. They are. Uh, so with this train wreck of a situation, there was one guy called. Yoshi P. What, what's, it, what's his full name again? Yoshinori Kitazu. Yoshinori Kitazu. And he chose to just walk into the room and revolutionize it. Well, yeah, it, it was it was a train wreck, and it was about to. I think he was like a, a like a design planner or something at the time. Yeah. And he said like, okay, I've been playing MMOs my entire life. Yeah. I know exactly what we need to do. Yeah. Please just give me the ring. We can quit now and lose a bunch of money, or I can turn this shit around. And Final Fantasy have and learned from that before. We can even just we can go or um, what did I say? Well, go your, go yeah, or die. That's true. Do or put, die. Put yeah. your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Um. So so they actually did give him the reins, and then then the other part was okay. Now I get gotta get the team on board. Yeah. Because these guys have been working. For uh, weeks on end, Whew. sleeping by their desks to oh, like to save this um, uh, this train wreck. Yeah, and I have to go up on stage and I have to tell them that could you please sleep underneath your desk for a couple more weeks? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a hard ask. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I I think the words were like um, I understand that you don't if you leave now, but please trust in me. I have a plan and I'm going to make it be successful yeah and he was looking across the room and every single face were just like man this is this is absolute <laughs> hell except for the music guy oh yeah the music masayoshi guy, soken oh yeah, god the, damn the music guy was super hype yeah <laughs> i imagine the reason. crowd is being over the sound and he, he's going like Hey, yeah, one brings shadow, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I see him in the back going like, "Oh, let's fucking go!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Titan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and um, so th- what they did then was to just um, insert a an actual uh, an actual like uh, wipe of the entire world, basically. Yeah, they, they into the game. They had they made the storyline be like that uh, the moon was gonna fall. Yeah, and then they they designed the whole story aspect of the game around that that fact, and and as you like, uh, as time went on, you could see the actual moon getting closer and closer in game, and and the characters would like uh, awaken with with nightmares of like doom and stuff. They were as well. Yeah, I didn't know like, that. like people who logged in, yeah, would, like get like a little cutscene of like the moon shaking and oh wow and, and doom upon the land like yeah so they were they would actually get small glimpses that that this was going to be like the end of something yeah and then uh people will like will would huddle up at like cliffs to, just to watch the the moon go down together and stuff towards yeah. the end and then you get a um 
Then you've got a cutscene, a very, very high budget, very good cutscene. There's a very good one. Uh, and then the servers would be unplugged. They were unplugged, and to this day, from that time, and to this day, in the span of 10 years, 1.0 is never being able, is never accessed to anyone again. No. It's just history now. I think you could, you could like, revamp it and, and make it accessible, but I don't think it's, it's not tenable. No, no, no. one is interested in that. No. And, um, and... You can, you can see that final, those final minutes on YouTube if you, if you search up like uh, the end of Eorzea or something. Yeah. There's so, a video that that you, yeah, people are watching the moon and then the cuts in place and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's also why I want to take up this, take up uh, the, the, this subject in the podcast because I feel like FF14 isn't just a good game, but it's also a redemption story. It's also, oh, yeah. it's also a zero to hero uh, Cinderella story about a game that we were saved just like this podcast. <laughs> uh, and um, so this happened and the servers were shut down. And then I, I think it was months later, weeks later. A couple of months. A couple of months. I think, yeah. There we are um, introduced with a, a, a new cutscene, right? Yeah. A new cutscene, a new launch of the game. And we see the world after the moon hit it. And... It is still holding on. A lot of destruction has caused, but the world is still intact. And then we see a Realm Reborn, which will now be patch 2.0. The first expansion, but also kind of the first, uh, the, the new version of the game, the yeah. restart. This is this is the game that when you're, when you're talking about Final Fantasy XIV and when you start Final Fantasy XIV, this is the game you're going to launch into. So that's also, if you're starting Final Fantasy XIV now, the first thing you'll see is a title screen and then um, and then just transitioning into the last cutscene you saw of yeah. 1.0, yeah, which we you, talked about. That's the starting cutscene now. You, when you start when you start the game, it's um, uh, you, you create your character, yeah. and then you press play, you choose your server, and then you press, you press play, yeah. and then you get a cutscene which just explains like, the moon fucking destroyed us, bruh. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, the the wipe is the story. Yeah, the wipe is the story. And, and, and that's our point of reference from now. Yeah. Uh, and to explain all of this, I remember you were taking me and uh, two of the other friends uh, in, in our Discord group who hadn't played it. Yep. Because, you know, one pitched it to you, and then there's me and you, and then two more, because there were five. Yep. So the last two guys also joined, and you had a PowerPoint for the three of us, just to make us as invested and updated as possible. Yes, and I went through the whole story of uh, 1.0. You one, even had a Kahoot. <laughs> yeah, I had a Kahoot at the end, where I was like, who is this character? Do you remember this character? Gaius van Belsar. <laughs> yeah, he's a... Uh, he's Gaius van Bowles in your ass. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do you know this guy's name? Louis Wall <laughs> Better yeah. fucking remember. Yeah, better fucking remember that L to the U to the E to the E X. <laughs> so we um we started off and let me tell you my, my, my point of reference is still that I'm pretty critical to, towards this. And then I start re- a Realm Reborn, and we gotta remember a Realm Reborn was legit it was the train wreck after the train was barely able to move again. Like, the train was almost fixed to barely I, move again. I do feel like, you, you said it was analogous to um, to uh, Final Fantasy 1, and it kind of is still. Yeah. Where, like, A Realm Reborn was very, very, very good for its time. When it came yeah. out, it was, like, amazing yeah. compared to what was before. Uh, but today, it doesn't really hold up that well. It's, like, it's pretty... It, it takes a long time to get going. Because we don't have the same appreciation for it as they did then. It, no. it was like this saved Final Fantasy XIV's reputation and name and history. This was like the, 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 the solution. Of course people would love this. But for us, who doesn't really have experienced the loss of the game at first, we just are introduced with something that is mediocre at best. Yeah, and, and well, your your expectations are like sky high because this is the game that saved this. This is the like the 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 patch, the update that saved the game. This yeah. is this is crazy good now. And then you start it, and you're like, this is kind of fucking lame. Yeah, and it's just you're introduced to all these characters, and everyone looks either very, very Square Enix looking or very edgy, and those often go hand in hand. I thought about it, like, all of them had white hair. 
All of them have white hair. All of them have names that are not real, but almost. Um, except for Thancred. I guess that's basically real. That's like an old Italian royal Thancred name. Wa Thancred Waters? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God, it's such a Square Enix name. Holy shit. Thancred My name Waters. Is Thancred Waters. My name is Alfie Noy. Yeah. And, and we have all these all these characters introduced, and this is like the main crew. And for I, I'm gonna try to get back into a year ago when I was a Realm Reborn, Nick. Yeah. I was fucking hell. This is boring. This is so uninteresting. None of these mechanics, the world building, appeals to me. I hate that it's new tech versus like new future tech meets medieval. I really didn't... Nothing appealed to me. It's wild. I've never had that well, atmosphere before. I, I think, to be completely honest, I think I kind of fucked you, too, because um, I told you to go uh, caster. Yeah, I, I chose to go... No, I, I wanted first to try to go healer, but I, I think, but then you said, oh, go DPS instead, and I, I took, like, okay, mage. What about caster? I haven't yeah. tried that before. And DPS, because DPS is like easier when you're learning the game. Yeah. Um, DPS is the damage per second, a healer is the healer, and tank is the one who takes the enemies. Yeah. yeah. But, the aggro. But Black Mage is so bad. It doesn't it's get good so until. fucking bad. Yeah. Let's just say it, it doesn't get good until level 70, and A Realm Reborn lasts up until level 50. So I don't ex I don't experience a single happy moment with Black Mage in all of Realm Reborn. Yep. And then and I, I'll 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 cop to that. That's my bad. <laughs> no, sure. that's because bad. I didn't I didn't know I hadn't tried every class at that point. No. So I was like, oh, Black Mage is kind of probably pretty cool. Yeah. And it's just it's slow as fuck. You don't feel really? like you're helping at all. No. It's um, the mana management is really boring. Yeah. It, uninteresting it's about the class is basically about how how uh well you can balance uh fire and ice which also means how well you can use and save your mana and make it recharge just at the perfect time is literally just a endless rotation of balance and that gets really lame when the balance is very easy to understand um, and it's not it, it's it's they don't do anything fun with the concept no. at all. Like, it, it sounds interesting when you're talking like that, but yeah. it really is not interesting at all. It really isn't. And I can make it uninteresting pretty fast. The attacks are called Fire 1, Fire 2, and Fire 3. There. It's not un it's interesting anymore. Uh, and... and, so and I was like, I got it to 70. Yeah. And Black Mage in 70, that is actually pretty fun. And I have it in 82 now, and it's even more fun. I'm not joking. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I'm like, oh shit, Black Mage now is actually better than a lot of the DPS classes. Yeah. Because it's it's kind of fun. Yeah. Just shooting spells like a motherfucker every single cast time. Forget about that shit. Let's just go insta yeah, you got cast. Like, <laughs> insta cast. <laughs> you got like insta casting and uh, and swift casting and stuff and and. Um... <clears throat> Like the ley line shit, where you shorten the cast time. Yeah, so. when you get the the attacks like Sino Glossy and uh, yeah, Glossy, yeah. <laughs> and when you get uh, those kind of attacks like Flare, and I don't remember the other one, but they they use something called Polygon. Very technical polyglot talking here. Polyglot. Yeah. And when you get the polyglot skills, it gets much uh, much more efficient as a class. Yes. But as a as a as a listener, you see, this sounds interesting. This sounds more fun. Like, yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on, but when it's just like. Uh, when mana empty, switch and mana full, and em and switch and mana empty and switch, and then use the addl, and then mana switch and again. You yeah. have the thunder spell going. Oh, I have the thunder spell. It does. It does nothing. It does fucking nothing. Damage over time, bro. Yeah, that damage over time to what the fucking gooba? No, because but... I I started with the the lancer class, which eventually goes on to be dragoon. Yeah, and uh, that's really fun. Yeah. And to, and to so I thought I thought every DPS would be like that. But yeah. No. But every DPS is mostly like that, except for Black Mage. It's wild. Actually, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah, and 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 the thing is that in FF14, everything is a lot about being fast. The combat is pretty fast paced, and you're you're supposed yeah. to be really quick with your rotation and learn to do it flawlessly, quick over time. But Black Mage can't be quick until level seventy. It's impossible because of the cast time. So, <clears throat> so I was just caught in this endless trap of cast times and 
I haven't really gotten into learning new classes because that's a very, very um, special thing for FF14 is that you can you can just put on a new weapon and you get the new new class. So you can switch back and forth to every class you want to. Yeah, in in uh, in World of Warcraft, if you wanted another class, you had to switch to an, another character. Yeah, uh, which I don't. Come the fuck on, man. Yeah. Uh, but Final Fantasy fourteen is like you you equip a weapon, you equip the sword. Yeah. You're a gladiator now. Yeah. You equip the staff. You're a black mage now. Yeah. You equip the uh, the lance. You're a lancer now. Yeah. And. Um, so uh, I really haven't gotten into switching at another class because I wanted to focus. That really isn't a thing in Realmborn. You usually just play one class for the start of the game. Um, so you can we... switch at level thirty, and that's too late to it for it to be like uh, fun. Yeah. So yeah. So so we had uh, you as our level eighty capped end game uh, dragoon. We was like, you have been our guide most of the time, like almost all of our playthrough. Yeah. And then you had me, little baby black mage. You had uh, our good friend Arshina, which was one of the other ones introduced to this along with me. Yeah. Who was a tank, a marauder. And we had uh, the last one, Cinnamon, who used, um, who was a uh, tank as well. Yeah. Gladiator. So we had like, yeah, two tanks, uh, me as a DPS, and uh, and SPM who could change to both healer and and DPS. Yeah, I, I when they started, um, when they started with me, uh, I changed to being a healer. Yeah. So that I could have more, um, um, a little bit more flexibility. I could join them in in uh, stuff. Yeah, and uh, so we set off on our our own born adventure. And it takes long, the cutscenes are long, dragged out, the conversation is mostly something you can't understand and you really need to struggle learning how they how they actually talk because in 1800s English. Yeah, it's written like you're in fantasy land. Like, it's written, uh, thou must... Uh, yeah, it's, it's like... Thou... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, everyone is writing like they just read... Um, uh, like they just read Moby Tell? Yeah, they just... They talk like they just read Geoffrey of Chaucer and wants to brag about reading Geoffrey of Chaucer. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. <laughs> Thou art an unchristian man, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that every time. Um, so the story also is really generic, and something I forgot to establish uh, earlier. I'm going really into depth here, but I hope that's okay. It's fine. Um, at Final Fantasy One, although we said um, um spm had a really nice uh, way of explaining the game and how it did, how it wasn't really successful today compared to today's standards. Um, the game introduced the concept of light and dark, and that is very important to talk about because that sounds cringe as fuck. And in A Realm Reborn, it is pretty cringe because everyone refers to you as the warrior of light every time. Light well, is supposed yeah, to be this good thing. It's not light and dark, but it's, it's astral and umbral. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and and, the, and you you call it like the umbral calamities. Yeah. Uh, they... One of the the moon thing falling on the earth in one point oh was a umbral calamity. The seventh umbral. The seventh umbral cal calamity, which which uh, brings you into an age of uh, an age of dark. Yeah. Which is the umbral era. Yeah. And then at the end of a realm reborn, you go through the story and up to level fifty, and then like they they announce that now the astral era begins. Yeah, because now there's uh, prosperity in the land. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we took the bad guys and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, we go through our own born, and we are introduced to this concept of astral umbral, as you said, and we are referred to the warrior of light, and we are referred to the the greatest hero of everything, and they really do a good job with. They really good do a good job with jerking you off in every fucking cutscene. Yeah. Where they're like going yeah. like, "Oh yeah, you're the warrior of the, you're the warrior of light," and you're you're like you you've saved us quadruple times now. But please get this bread for me, man, because I really need this bread. No, no, no the, the cheese. The, the cheese, yeah, the, the cheese. Because there's a guy who asks you for cheese, and you have to go through a whole ass dungeon to get it. Yeah, and there and, and it is story mandated. You have to do this. Yeah, so yeah. you have to go through the whole. Uh, the whole dungeon you can. and the whole quest line has like 20 quests. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't defeat uh, Ultima if you don't get him the cheese. Yeah. And then, gotta, yeah. Brayflux gotta get the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, oh yeah, that was fucking Brayflux, I remember now. And then after that, you get the Titan boss fight. Yeah. Uh, Which, yeah if, so, you, if you had ti gotten Titan before that, maybe it would have been more fun. Yeah. But uh, they wait so long to like... 
they keep you from the good stuff for so long. Yeah, and I know I, I am also partially uh, guilty to blame for for all of the whining I did through our own reborn because I was I was really a crybaby about all of this. I was like, they were complaining a lot. I was complaining a lot uh, for good reasons here and there, but I could really have taken it down a notch. And uh, at some point, you had to basically just pinpoint the locations I needed to get to before I quit the game. Like, yeah. constantly. You, you had to, like, just wait until Titan. If you have taken Titan, then you can reconsider. And there was also always a little, <laughs> no pun intended, glimpse of light inside me that was uh. like, okay, just, I crawl a bit longer and see what I can find. Um, I think I had to tell you at one point that, bro, if the cutscene isn't voiced, just skip it. Yeah. Just get to the end. Please. And at some point, I remember I said... Now I need to skip them even if they're voiced because I was getting so tired. I remember it was in 2.5 or 2.4. No, 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 it was 2.3. 2.3, it's yeah. Right before they introduce uh, uh, the the fourth city. Yeah, yeah. So And I was like, no, no, that's the cutscene. Mm -hmm. It's literally the next cutscene. Yeah. Is, the, is the, where it starts being pretty cool. I remember which one it was. Uh, so, yeah, we go through our own reborn and. and we get done with it, everyone reaches level 50, yay, we're pretty much on the same spot, every one of us, me, Oshina, and Cinnamon. I think Oshina was like uh, way into the first expansion. Yeah, actually, and, and um, we get to the end of, of Realm Reborn, and then we go through the patch notes, which is something that comes after every expansion, they, they patched it over a span of two years until the first expansion came out. Yeah. So you have then 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and 2.5, and they are a bit more enjoyable than a realm reborn but still not quite holding up to Dude, standards 2.1 i i i'll, mm, I'll play uh realm reborn again before oh. i have to rewatch oh, the 2.1 yeah. shit oh god thorn march right 2.1 is thorn march uh, god damn uh thorn march boss yeah. yeah which they fixed now thank god oh god okay so okay then uh, spoiler warnings right on this timestamp if you if you haven't if you, if you plan to play it, um, no, this is this is a fucking horrible sell. We can't like. Oh, if you if you okay okay you know yeah 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 yeah. Stupid yeah. fucking game. <laughs> if you're gonna play this game that I had a fucking horrible time with. Go yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah yeah okay. Spoiler warning. Okay uh, so <laughs> so um, we launch into Heaven's World. We arrive well, at the first expansion. Let's not let's not get. Uh, too fast now. Okay. You yeah. you were like having a really bad time with Black Mage. Yeah. And I was saying, um, when you get to the first expansion, you can change your class into another pretty cool one. Yeah. Please just wait until we're there. Yeah. The first expansion is called Heaven's Word, and I was like, when you get to Heaven's Word, there's a pretty cool class. Mm -hmm. Um. That's your goal, getting that class to 50. Yeah. And and you were like, yeah, okay, I can do that. I can do that, sure. And um, so the, the, the game, the game, it starts out really bad, and then it slowly gets kind of good. Yeah. Like, it gets decent. But then you have, like, the post, the post game, like, you have the main game, which is, like, ARR, yeah. Around yeah. Reborn. And then in the patches you get all the, um, all the hard mode shit, mm -hmm. and and uh, like you get raids and uh, stuff like that. And it's like that for every expansion as well. You have the base expansion and then the patch notes later words the post expansion, which gives you the raids, the series of boss fights and stuff like that. Yeah. So we had um, first it was the Crystal Tower raids, which is alliance raids, or what they call with twenty four players. Yeah, that's. Basically, just what it means. It's twenty-four players, yeah. and you're you're in three different groups. Yeah. Um, which I don't know. You you didn't you didn't feel too too good about them. I remember. No, you it's not until like, recently I've started enjoying Alliance Raids a bit more. Yeah, and you were kind of like, I mean, yeah, this is okay. It's not 
super cool, but or I mean, like it's it's fun that there's so many people, but yeah. it's not the content is kind of lame, and I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the Crystal Tower ones are pretty fucking lame. <laughs> yeah, they are, and the story within it is also pretty fucking lame. Oh yeah, yeah, it's about like this ancient bloodline you need to like save and. It really, really is a, it's a, a big Final drag. Fantasy three reference. Yeah, like that, and, and it's like okay for someone who hasn't even enjoyed the game yet. We we can't seem to care. I liked it. <laughs> and then we go to uh, we try the raid series, and if you didn't think ARR was pretty much abandoned yet, I can tell that the raid series aren't active. So we need to yeah. we need to kind of cheese the game by going in what's called unsynced, and that means. We gotta go into it unofficial and beat the trial, you know, the the, uh, the raids uh, with someone in a high level, so they can just drag us into the whole dungeon. Yeah, just yeah. so you can see the story, and and that's the raid the raid series for for Realm Reborn is the only one that's like that. Yeah, All the other ones are in what is called uh, like the duty roulette. Yeah, which means you can you can queue up for them. Yeah, and they'll just like pop. With other players, so we don't need to actually just form a party with someone high level to, to complete them. Yeah, but the the uh, the level fifty raids aren't part of the roulette, so no. they're completely abandoned. You yeah. you won't get anyone else that unless like... unless like it's a very very weird scenario where eight people queue Q into it, queue in for the same one. Yeah, yeah, that's that doesn't happen. No, I thought, if someone has taken synced Bahamut raids. In the last year, I think they should uh, get an achievement oh, without using party trainer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we uh, <clears throat> we we take this. Is there anything more in the uh, patch notes in Realm Reborn? Yeah, because you you get uh, you get the hard modes. Yeah. Which is like this is the it. Okay, so throughout the game you have dungeons like yeah. you have in um, uh, World in... Warcraft, but. But the dungeons are very different where like you, you, you unlock them throughout the story and you just like you get them in a list and you just pick the dungeon you want to go to. Yeah. And then you press uh, apply to to the finding stuff and then they'll just find three other guys and you're off. Yeah. You're in you're in a dungeon. So it's, that's what we mean by queuing. You're yeah. not physically standing there waiting by the entrance like in World of Warcraft. You're waiting in a list of matchmaking. Well you're not doing it in World of Warcraft. Uh, you're like having a group and then going into the dungeons together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but in in uh, Final Fantasy, it's more like you just you just hit the button and you wait for other people to also hit the button. Yeah. Um, and that's what I mean with the with the roulette. You can you can get a dungeon at random, mm -hmm. and so they like they'll find oh two people applied for this. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll do two people from that has pressed roulette. Yeah. And they'll just get that one. So that everyone gets the same dungeon. And that means that the very, very high level people who has done roulette can get very low level dungeons with new beginners. Yeah. So they can be very unbalanced in skill and experience so that me, a little baby black mage, runs through and then there's like a level 80,000 dragoon that just jumps through the entire stuff. But everyone gets, impatient. everyone everyone gets synced down yeah. to the same um, to the same level. So so no one is stronger than anyone else really. Yeah. Uh, but um, and since there is but, so so there's yeah. there's a there's a lot of there's a good amount of goodwill that people who has done this before and are experienced tells the new players how it works and what to do. Yeah. Uh, that's a huge part of the game um, to actually like be kind to each other hmm. which doesn't happen in mmos no people are usually trying to one-up each other in mmos yep or at least doesn't have the patience to explain you things people uh people want to be better than you all the time in mmos but in final fantasy 14 people are actually very very happy with just telling you how you do stuff and getting you into the game yeah and just being really nice like yeah. okay so in world of warcraft this is a community issue in world of warcraft i would have like a bad interaction with someone else every day really every single every, day there every would, day um, like every every time i did some duty there will always be like one motherfucker oh god damn uh, so i don't remember them very clearly no um, like because they happen all the time yeah but i can remember every single time it happened in final fantasy 14 because it happens like once a month yeah it's literally a fucking it's a fucking eclipse 
that's the amount of times like uh, when someone is actually does have a disgusting behavior. I think I have two or three people in my blacklist. Yeah, I don't have anyone in my blacklist actually. No. Um, but yeah, okay. So so yeah, eventually we we have the dungeons, and eventually through the game uh, via the story, you get what's called trials, and that is a dungeon with only one boss fight where well, you yeah, learn the mechanics. It's just, it's just a, a huge boss. And yeah. you have to learn every every uh, every attack he has to like make it. Yeah, and um, know where to stand, know what to do at certain points. Just know just your learn, role. Know, know your role. Learn to fight. Um, use your role as you do the mechanics, and you stand in the right place, and you yeah. hit him this way and that way, and mm -hmm. and it's very it's very fun. At the it, at the start, it's kind of like just brute force it. Just do it. Just lay it out. Yeah. Um, but when you get to the hard modes, it's actually, you have to know what to do and you have to know what this does, mm -hmm. what that does, what does this mean? Where do I stand now? Do I attack him now? Yeah. No, you shut the fuck up. You stay over there. You yeah. dumb bitch or else we'll, what, we'll all die. Yeah, we'll all die. Uh, yeah. So they get pretty in depth, um, as we go. And, uh, after Realm Reborn, we are introduced to a lot of new trials, really, because Realm Reborn has a lot of content as well as it's a long uh, base game. Yeah. So we get, I think, we get a new trial for almost every patch, where we have like four new trials, just in the post expansion. Yeah. Um, we have Thor March, which nobody likes. Yeah, we have World Eater, which everyone likes. <laughs> everyone likes World Eater, don't don't they? Ah, they do. Yeah, they do, but not. Not if you have already liked it. Do you know what I mean? If you already have that moment in your life where you love World Eater and then take World Eater again, it's kind of just, okay, now I see why this is actually a bit annoying. Well, yeah. Uh, well, World Eater Extreme when there's no railing. Yeah, that's, this pull that's, that's, a, that's it, a it, fun one. It's a big, big, big fish. <laughs> big, big fish balls. It's big eel. Yeah, big eel. Big, big snack. Um, okay, so, and then you have Striking Tree. And then oh, you have, um, yeah. what's the four one? Uh, that is um, Ak Shiva. Akafa Amphitheater. Akafa Amphitheater. And uh, I will say that's the trial where it starts being pretty cool. Yeah. Akafa Amphi Amphitheater is a pretty, pretty good. That's the last trial, last final trial of Aral Reborn. Well, there, are, there is some in, in, in 2.5, but they're like, they, you almost never get them, so you don't remember them. No, it's, okay, it's, yeah. It's, it's a chrysalis and... Uh, Oh, they removed, they removed the, the Westwind. Steps of Faith. No. Yeah, they did. That's true. Which was actually a pretty cool trial. Now it's a solo duty. It was a solo duty. Yeah, okay. That yeah. that makes sense. Uh, so you just do it alone. Yeah. Which, I mean, I, I, yeah, it makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we, we uh, have these trials and um, go through them. And, and the game kind of picks up the pace. Gets yeah. a bit better. Once you, once you like, get... Into the seriousness of, of learning what to do and where to stand and what to how to attack and stuff like that. It's like oh, mm. oh, I get it now. Okay, yeah. Th this is the real game. This is actually pretty fun. Yeah. At least it was for me. I remember when I took the striking tree trial. Yeah. When I did that, synced down. Everyone was fifty, mm -hmm. and we did it with uh, completely randoms, and everyone knew what to do, and we pulled it off. It was the it was one of the biggest highs I had gotten to that point where I was yeah. like, oh god, this is fucking cool. Yeah. Where it's like it's just everything fits perfectly. You have worked together as a team to develop these uh, these techniques to avoid the mechanics that just eventually fits together like a big piece of one thousand puzzle pieces. Yeah, and, and, yeah. The, and the your team of eight just like it blossoms into this like symbiosis yeah, of, uh, and, of patterns and like yeah. going um being exactly like perfectly aligned combined with a boss that has a good character design and something we haven't mentioned yet the music as you as we yeah. as you mentioned earlier the, the the music guy was the only one hyped for our realm reborn i can see why and that guy fucking continued being hyped for everything yeah, he makes he great was... tracks uh, okay, we can say that's the that's the end of Aroma Born. It does, yeah. The the Aroma Born. If you do that, if if you do the end game stuff, and you actually care about doing like extremes legit, you'll actually find that uh, the game is really good. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. But you, 
it does take a long time to yeah. get going. But I guess the I guess the um But once it actually gets going you have like this revelation of Oh yeah, okay, I get it now. And then it just keeps going after that point. After that point it's like you're good. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like my summary for Earl Reborn is it's an endless it's an endless potential. Yeah. It's like it's it's it, it lasts forever, but you can really see that something will pop off, you just don't know when. Yeah. And then it pops off. Then I remember <clears throat> watching the credits roll for 2.5, the last patch note in all of A Realm Reborn's post-game. And then I was in a Discord call with you, and you said, Okay, now, Nick, go out to the title screen, click on uh, title screens, the menu on the title screen, mm. and watch Heavensward demo trailer. And I was like, all right, this better be fucking good. This is what I've been waiting for. And I'm just hit with the most... If you know me, which I'm sure pretty of pretty many of you do, it's the most Nick thing ever. It's the fucking most Nick thing ever and most Speeham thing ever. It's like this trailer of of just dragons and fire and 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 combat and they introduce like the new main story class and God, Heavensward really kicks off immediately. Yeah, it gives you everything. And I, I also everything you've been waiting for. You, I, I remember you told me after you saw the the, the trailer for Heaven's Word. Yeah. You were like, oh yeah, this is the game I thought I was gonna get. Yeah, yeah. I said this is the game I paid for. Yeah. And the other game was something I just got before I was able to play it. Yeah. Now, yeah. now I get it. Now this is this is the price of admission. Exactly. And I think we also need to kind of to sell the story even more. I think we need to tell what two point five ends with just very shortly. Can we do that? Um, or do you think that's a bit too spoiler territory? I mean, a lot of the fun is just seeing like where the story goes at that point. Yeah. So I think I'm just we, I, we can just leave it like we that. can leave it like that. But um, it it adds a new perspective and atmosphere that they just remember the thing I told you earlier with how they jerk you off every single second. That stops in a very brutal way. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, you feel kind of alone. And, and desolate, and the Heaven Sword opens you to a world of challenge where your your potential and the game's potential is really uh, taking a turn for the better. Yeah, and yeah, it, and it, it's it's very it's a very good feeling being the being the underdog. Yeah, like you you spend the whole you spend like the last what 30, 50 hours. Yeah, being like, oh yeah, I'm the best. I'm the coolest. I'm the mm -hmm. best. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I'm the college kid. I I'm the yeah. football uh, captain of college. And in Heaven's Word, you're like, uh, okay, I don't really matter here. No, I kind of gotta just. You gotta earn your respect. I, I gotta earn my respect, but I also I don't really know what's going on in this place. Yeah. So I I don't really have uh, a place in the society or like a voice to actually change anything yeah and then the, the i mean the heaven's word is the meme is that the he heaven's word is the critically acclaimed expansion <laughs> yeah yeah that's an ongoing phrase yeah and you can you can really see it when you actually start playing it that like oh man okay the story actually is very interesting and it keeps going yeah in like m maybe expected uh, destinations like you, you kind of expect this to happen when you see this thing but in the way they do it is very very interesting it's executed masterfully almost yeah and then we we um i i, I the, feel like yeah and the 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 class the, the like the story class for heaven's word is the dragoon which is the one i started yeah with. so i just felt like a superhero yeah i felt like it's an expansion for you yeah as like, oh yeah i'm the coolest man. <laughs> yeah, yeah so i feel like i'm walking through these gates uh, like these gates to ishgard the main city in 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 heaven's world yeah and i walk through these gates um or eventually gets there cinnamon gets there as well like or uh, was there at this point uh, she knows deep into the into the expansion I think. yeah um so we walk through these gates. I'm a tired black mage. Oshina has a pretty worn out more older. And we get we get through these gates and we are just introduced to three new classes. And everyone is unique and pretty cool. At that point. Well, Astrologian is fucking awful. But okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a cool uh, 
point of reference. It, yeah, it's yeah, cool yeah. From the, yeah. Um, new DPS, new healer, new tank. Yeah. So the DPS is called Machinist, where it wields a gun, and it's basically um, the Howdy partner. Yeah. So uh, Oshina Howdy's, he, he becomes the Howdy. Yeah. And then the Astrologian is kind of left off. No one picks that up. I did actually try it for a couple uh, I also levels. did, actually. It's, um, mm. it's not... It's not fun. No, nah, it's, it's not pretty bad. It's a Taro card based healer. Yeah. Uh, which oh, wow, that sounds cool. You think? Nah, man, it's yeah. not cool it's at all. It's three Taro cards and none of them matter. Um, but the new tank that is available is called Dark Knight, and that was the class that you had built up for me to get when I'm done with ARR. Yeah. And I enter the gates, I take off my old black mage outfit, put on that that new fresh armor, and that large Dark Knight Berserk sword, which yeah. Dark Knight wields. Because you love Berserks, so I was like, yeah, dude, you need, you need Dark Knight. You yeah. Need to go get Dark Knight. And uh, I remember when, when you were inside Ishgard, you were like, where's the fucking Dark Knight quest? <laughs> Where's the fucking Dark Knight? <laughs> yeah, I think you have to do one more quest. Are you fucking for me? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was so done with these cast time stuff. And I think I'd gotten like, you know, you know, speed blind. When you're driving in... Not that I'm doing it, but when you're driving like 140 kilometers an hour... You're not doing that? No, I'm driving 160. Okay. <laughs> when you're driving 140 kilometers an hour and... And... You you you, tr you think you stop, but you're still driving in fifty kilometers per hour because you're you're blind to the speed. Yeah. Like I haven't done this, but I heard this from a story from my driving teacher actually back in when I was eighteen. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, and that's kind of how I felt with the cast time. That this is, is how it, every yeah, class yeah, is. Yeah. In reverse. <laughs> yeah. In reverse. Like everything is so slow. Yeah. And then I pick up uh, Dark Knight, and I realize that hmm, I don't have cast time. I don't have the three seconds I gotta wait to launch my attack. And, I, and you told me that. Yeah. You, you said it, I remember it audibly, you said, oh wow, Dark Knight, you, it doesn't take three seconds to throw your attacks? Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, yeah. And, and you tried to like, tell me that, no, no, because, you know, you, I just pressed the button and, and, and the thing happens. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's the, what's the problem? No, there's no problem. You just, like, you, you just hit the button and it happens. And I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. No wonder you fucking hate this game. <laughs> as a black mage. So, as a dark knight, everything, of course, you thought, became... You thought insta-casting was special. Yeah, I did. I thought clicking on the attack and doing the attack was a privilege you rarely get. Or I... That was what I was used to. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I picked up the Dark Knight and I just realized that one, this is my new main. Two, I kind of like the role of being the tank. And three, the game is just improving by every second. Yeah. And then we get introduced to the story of Heaven's Sword in, in short terms. It's medieval, uh, um, gothic. Uh, if you yeah. read about the Hundred Years' War, yeah. Um, that's pretty, that's not too far off actually. The Hundred Years' War meets Game of Thrones. But yeah. just done good. And I, I kind of like a little bit of War of the Roses in there. Yeah, War of the Roses. Like, well, combining all these elements of medieval, uh, denying those kind of modern future tech for a while. We're just going medieval here and... Yeah, it hits you at the very end. Yeah, that's true. And, and what it does is like, oh, I get this is a fucking problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, it also puts into perspective how the future tech is kind of destroying and yeah. how destructive yeah. it is. It goes, it goes more into like uh, why the future tech is there. Yeah. Why, why we should not use that fucking future tech. Yeah. And uh, how it can be used if you so desire. Yeah. Uh, and so we go through Heaven's Word, have a, have a great time, <clears throat> and we eventually reach a post Heaven's Word, yep. um, which are the first time me, every one of us, gets to experience a post game fully inactive. Like yep. uh, we get to we get to experience the raid series for Heaven's Word actually queuable with other players instead of going yep. in unsynced. We get to play the first trial series of our lives with. Three trials being like a little side story. We get to experience new alliance raids. Yeah. Um, which is all absolutely fucking majestic fun. <laughs> it's it's so fun. I remember the 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 uh, the Alexander Day 
was yeah. pretty good. Where we like, uh, Alexander is the name of the Heavensward uh, raids, the active ones. Yeah. So that's the first uh, real raid uh, series that you can do with other people. Yeah. And so we're like, uh, we gather our group. We uh, do like half of them, I think. Yeah. And then we we take a little break and we have a little dinner and yeah. And then uh, later on we we get back on and we do the last like four ones. Yeah. And it's like the coolest shit in the world. <laughs> it's so fucking cool. And it pops off really good and everyone's fucking happy. And it, yeah, I mean like post heavens were times were really, really good times. Yeah. In that game. It was and. Yeah, exactly. We we and we also all, all did it together because I think we were at the same point. Yeah, we were all at the same point. Right? Yeah, because Arsina had slowed down. Cinnamon has really upped his speed, and I was going like because we were yeah. like Arsina, me, Cinnamon, and now we had all caught up to being at the raids together. Um, and then we go through Heaven Sword pretty in a similar pace, <clears throat> and eventually we. Complete the post Heaven's Word, which is also keeping the same quality as Heaven's Word. The whole Seven Word, Seven Heaven's Word experience is uh, beautiful throughout. Yeah, like uh, like three point three, which is like the third patch in the third expansion. You know, yeah. Heaven's Word. Yeah. Point three, three point three, is uh, is the best content up until that point. Yeah, yeah, that is really good with the best trial, with the best story, with the best um, political intrigues. Everything. Yeah, and you really feel like, like I think, I think at the end someone closes a book, and you actually feel like, yeah, that was a book close. Yeah, and the book is re reading Heaven's Word. Yeah, yeah, and so we're, it's like we're, we're like we we actually did it. Yeah, there's yeah. there's nothing really here to to think about now. No, we're, we're done with this chapter. Yeah, and then we are introduced to the second expansion. Stormblood. And to summarize Stormblood, it is where they got to be Japanese without any restrictions. <laughs> they yeah. got to introduce classes like... Uh, yeah, that's so true. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I tried to throw that on you. Classes like Samurai and... Oh yeah, I, I fucking forgot what the oh, class is. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, samurai and... Uh, Red Mage. Red Mage. Let's go. Uh, None other? Uh, wait, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, literally Red Mage and Samurai. We're getting two DPSs. Yep. Yeah. That yes. Is, yep. Let's go. We, we got it. <laughs> so, um, I actually switch out my main from going as the tank Dark Knight and going into Samurai and just leveling Samurai after that. Yeah. And playing through Stormblood. Uh, what is Stormblood? Stormblood is bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, Stormworld's not bad. Stormworld is it's it's like a whiplash from uh, because like you, three point four and three point five really sets up Stormworld really really well, uh, and you're kind of hyped for Stormblood, but then Stormblood doesn't really pop off. It pops off very early and then never again. Yeah, yeah, kind of. It, it pops up really early on. It, it's like, oh shit, this is cool. This is amazing. Okay, and now we gotta go. Okay, I get, it. I get it now. We gotta go to Japan. Yeah, and then we gotta do something like a little bit of this, and then you get yeah. the first trial, and the trial is fucking amazing. Oh, and you feel like fucking Metal Gear. Oroka Yuka. And it's uh, it's pretty fucking cool and then after that first trial you're like all right what's what's next and then it's boring yeah it's, it's a realm reborn again yeah and that's the thing here is that you kind of get the feeling like you're going through the realm reborn dialogue never getting anywhere endless cutscenes of nothingness just trying to catch up to heaven's words quality there's one good arc there's a there's a good arc the 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 bitch the fucking bitch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a cool arc. Yeah, but that also is is done really fast. Like yeah. it's, it's over with fairly quickly. Um, or is it? Uh, and and, oh. <laughs> and I yeah, like the the guy with the chainsaw is cool. <laughs> what's his what's his name again? Greenovaf. Greenovaf. Fucking, we got him as a minion. Anyway, yeah. anyway, <laughs> <laughs> a one piece ass laughter. Yeah, um, it's fun. So, so Stormblood is more like uh, we're a bit goofy here, we're a bit uh, Asian here, and we are 
trying like we're trying to recreate this atmosphere of uh, of um, uh, f- freedom and liberty and yeah. union. The, the, there's like a there's a a China map. Yeah. And there's a Mongolia map. Yeah. And there's uh, the Japan hub town. Yeah. And then there's um, there's like a, a th- Albania Balkan uh, map. Well, it's it's what would you call it? it's it's uh, Pakistan. Really. Yeah. Uh, but then the Pakistan maps fucking suck ass. Yeah. And the China map suck pretty much ass as well. This China map is pretty uninteresting. It's cool. There's like a giant wall going through it. That's yeah. kind of fucking cool. And we have a Philippines map, which is kind of good because everything is almost ocean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a huge ocean. And it's, really, it's, it's impressive how big it is. Yeah. Because um, that ocean is part of the map. Yeah. The ocean yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Swim, motherfucker. You see that ocean? You can swim in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, but, the, but the story is very, uh, very boring until like the 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 final trial, like the final quest yeah. called Stormblood. Yeah. Like it it ends with like, hey, that was pretty good. That was, yeah. You know what? That was cool. That I was, was okay. I was kind of. I think I was a bit like. It's the Realm Reborn things again. So I kind of, when I was at the end ending one, I was kind of feeling like a lack of redemption within my enjoyment, which I was like, I see that this is a nice conclusion, but God, I feel kind of scammed after Heaven's Word. I doesn't feel very... Yeah, it doesn't... But where is the redemption, Spiham? I'm looking with my binoculars. Where is the redemption? Where is the redemption for the ass expansion? Ah, there's these uh, these patches you see. Oh, the patch notes of Stormblood. You tell me that. You, no, are they patches good? from Dark Souls. You dumbass. <laughs> he stole the good boy, content. Boy, my a. <laughs> yeah, he stole the good content. Now I'm gonna kill him. I kill the white mage. <laughs> so yeah, Stormblood is finished, and we entered the patch notes of Stormblood. Yeah. And this is where you really love them. Oh, I fucking yeah, I, I love the patch notes. Ah, uh, four point one is okay. Four point one is fine. Yeah, four point one is fine. Four point two and three. Uh, yeah. Jeff Sikis. <laughs> uh, I I agree. Four point four is also really fucking good. Four point four is pretty good. Yeah, I have a poster looking at it right over my screen right now of four point four and five hanging on next to each other. Yeah, and four point five has like a fucking gray dungeon. Yeah, that's true. Um, so you see those guys doing the high five at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. those, yeah. Uh, the the last boss of that dungeon, and do a high five. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh, um, yeah. So we go through the patch notes, and they are kind of picking picking up the pace again, getting good, and we're almost done here. By the way, thank you for holding out with us being very energetic and talkative about this, especially me, because this is this has I been mean, sitting prob- in so long. Oh yeah, and, uh, I mean next episode is probably going to be something else, but uh, for now it's all Final Fantasy fourteen, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right now it's only. Final Fantasy fourteen. Fuck you. <laughs> but uh, next episodes will be about everything. But uh, hey, too early to talk about next episode. We are still on Final Fantasy. If um, you're interested in the next episode, <laughs> you can subscribe to this channel. Oh, we will be back in, in uh, hopefully maybe a week or something. I don't know. Haha. <laughs> yeah. The, thank you for the for the plug. Be, 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 make sure to subscribe to this channel and uh, and hit the bell. Let us know in the in the comments if there's anything we can do better because we will ignore it. Uh, okay. So the. Uh, after the patch notes of Stormblood. That's good. Yeah, I don't want to listen to the comments. Me neither. <laughs> I, um, of course, it's, it's nice of you. Like, nice yeah. We you need can... we need some self-esteem. Pot, you can comment. You're, Pot, you're hey, allowed. Pot. Hey, man, how are you doing? Nice. Okay. We probably wouldn't do this without him, actually, let's be honest. No, without Pot. No, because Pot was, like, one of my earliest English viewers, and that kind of sparked this interest of having an English podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, thanks, Pot. Thanks, Mats. Uh, hope you're doing well, my uh, my good friend. Thumbs up for you, man. Okay, so we're done with the patch notes. Yeah. And in, I think it's four point five at the at the very beginning of four point five, the last patch of yeah. of the patch notes. Uh, oh, can we tell them what happens? Can we tell them what happens in that patch? Well, what part? Because we're still a party. You remember we talked about all these party members with white hair and stuff. We're still... Uh, oh, yeah, Some yeah, of them yeah. are still intact. Yeah, of course, yeah. And sure. then... Yeah, then, they're, they're called the Science. Yeah, we're called back, the Science. Back in the Realm Reborn. You know, we, we made a little funny joke about Thanquid Waters. Yeah. We made a little funny wo- joke about white hair. Yeah, and about speaking in very English diplomatical manners. Yeah, that, that shit stops really fucking fast. Yeah. But yeah. We are we are now still left with uh, some of them. Yeah. Uh, well, we don't have to talk about who who's here and who's not. 
No, but we still have them. Um, we're not saying that everyone is here. We're not saying that no one is here. But we still have our friends. Yeah. And then we still don't have them, in a way. They start passing out. Yeah, they start passing out. And they kind of start, like, not dying, but, like, comatose. Yeah. And first it happens to one. And then it's like, okay, this is a bit weird, but we still... We have concluded Stormblood. We're still done. We have one last mission and dungeon to go through, but we're basically... Yeah. We're basically seeing a conclusion here and can move forward to New Horizons. Yeah. And then two others pass out. Yeah. And then you're left with not many more. So you're like, oh, okay, what, what's happening to our friends here? And then eventually everyone passes out. Yeah. And you're all alone in this last dungeon and the last little fight. Yep. And you have to do it all on your own. And eventually when you're done with that, <clears throat> you, um, you find a little gateway, let's say that to another uh, place and uh, you don't know yeah there's a little there's like a little tear rift through, yeah a little rift through like i wouldn't say dimensions but maybe it is like yeah yeah in a way between worlds yeah so you to find out what happens to your your comrades all alone you go through the this rift and that is the first quest of the third expansion Shadowbringers. Yeah. And Shadowbringers, if you've heard someone talk about it, they, they they praised it. You can't hear someone say anything negatively about it. Really. No. Uh, no. Which is about to change! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, Shadowbringers, really fucking good. Compared to everything we've talked about, really fucking good. Yeah. Uh, and if you haven't already... If you've not been too hyped to do it yet, you, you will get a little allowance from me and, and Spiham, or I will allow you to go and check out the trailer. Even though you haven't played Final Fantasy XIV yet, go check out the trailer for Shadowbringers right now, because that's maybe the best trailer and piece of music used I have ever, ever witnessed. I'm not joking. I'm still to this day listening to the Shadowbringers track twice a day. Yeah. To and back from work. I'm listening to it. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make much sense if you if you haven't if you don't have the like the aroma born backing. No, it it won't really use like make a, much sense. But because you've been through like so much with ARR and then Heaven's Word and stuff after and everything, yeah, it it goes so fucking hard. It, damn it. really fucking does. And I remember we watched it in our sofa together after. Doing the final quest of Stormblood called Stormblood. I remember you were like, come down here and we'll watch it immediately on the on the TV. Yeah. And we just sat down and we watched the whole thing and I was like, God damn. God damn. God damn. Uh, it's uh, amazing. It pops off so well and it really just introduces us to not only a new problem for us or our world, but a new problem for several worlds. <laughs> yeah, you, you get you get to see like the, the actual story yeah. of... Of Final Fantasy, like, oh, now I know how it all fits together, how everything is, why we're doing this, why uh, why our opponents are the way they are, Yeah. why uh, stuff is going to happen like this and like that, and how we can stop it, and maybe we can't stop it, maybe we got to just fucking try, Yeah. but we need our friends. We do. So we got to go get our friends. And, uh, yeah, you um, you find out that your, uh, your uh, the time, the, 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 the um, you observe time differently, so one hour in our universe... Uh, is a year in that universe. I think that's like one day. Yeah, one day is it's... one year in that universe. So you go in and you see the first of your friends to uh, fall into coma has been there for five years already. Yeah. Uh, so things have happened and you're really getting uh, like sucked into this world. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so when you uh, in 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 your own world, you were like the warrior of light because you were supposed to bring light to the to the world, and mm -hmm. you were like supposed to like stop. You gotta stop the darkness. Is a very, very basic Final Fantasy thing. Like, yeah, we talked about it from the first one. Yeah, the first one is called the warrior of light. Uh, in in Final Fantasy one, you, you were called the party of light. You know. Yeah. And so uh, you get over to Shadowbringers land, and you see that the whole world has just been flooded with light. Yeah. So things things doesn't die. No. 
things are kept alive even though they should be dead. Yeah. Things are too good to be true. <laughs> yeah, things doesn't die and, and it never it's never it never becomes night. In such a macabre way that you almost fucking learn to despise daytime. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of hate daytime. Because it brings so much gruesome things with it. Yeah. yeah. And so you um you you have to like uh, don the mantle of the dark knight, which Thankfully, Nick already had. Yeah, so that's why I changed back to Dark Knight after Stormblood for, uh, from being Samurai over back to Dark Knight. And that is the main class of the expansion. So it yep. worked really well. Uh, and then you have to eventually, uh, to, to exterminate the light, you need to find you your bring, darkness. You gotta bring night back into the back into the land. Yeah, and it's, it's just such a good way of storytelling. Even that is a kind of masterpiece in its own. I think that like during the during the main quest, they they just sit you down, yeah, and then they just tell you the story of what happened, yeah, for like twenty minutes, yeah, literally. Like, okay, this is why this happened. This is what's going on. This is who we are. This is what you what you do. This is why the things are like they are. Yeah, and we're getting introduced to two new classes again. Um, yeah. dancer, dancer, and the and that's a new DPS and a new uh, tank called Gunbreaker, which is an old FF class, right? From it's, the it's Final Fantasy VIII, I think. Yeah, I think okay. The main guy is a. It's basically a really square Enix class where you have a blade with a gun attached to it, so you can slice and shoot. Yeah, it's a, it is a gun blade, but it's like just very big, very big gun blade. And yeah, this this game certainly changed. <laughs> And all for the better. That's it all for the worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, to, to, to be completely honest, I'm still on the patch notes of Shadowbringers, guys. So here yeah, ends you, my segment. <laughs> you did 5.3. And yeah. I think we can agree that uh, 5.3 is the best thing in the game. At least the boss fight, the trial introduced in 5.3 was insanely, insanely good and well, such a got, nice conclusion. You got the soul of duty into yeah. the dungeon, yeah. into the trial, yeah. and and all of the story is like combined in that patch. Yeah, so that's like, true. It just feels very, very complete. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I feel, I feel like kind of disingenuous here because okay. I've been, I've been like, I've been, I've been saying that. On a Ramu trial, the striking tree. Yeah, that's really where it popped off on me. Yes, yeah. that's, that's the moment the game grabbed me. Um, but but I mean also like a uh, three point three. That's really where I was hooked on the game. Yeah. Oh, I really like the storm If I'm if I'm if I'm super honest. Yeah. I actually kind of didn't really feel anything special towards the game. Until 5.3. Really? Yeah. So it took you that much time to really love it yourself. And I, I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time playing that fucking video game. Yeah. And, and all of it was because 5.3 hit me with such a fucking emotional like truckload. Yeah. That I was like, oh, this, this game is like kind of maybe the best game. You were playing. Well, at least best MMO, not the best yeah. game. I wouldn't say the best game I ever played because there's a lot of fucking issues with it. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's... They just managed to stick the landing in a way. Yeah. Where, where I'm very, very uh, content with saying this is not the best game I've ever played, but it might be my favorite game. I see. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's the game you like the most. It's, yeah, it's the game where if I don't have anything to play, sure, I can I can do a couple of uh, boss jar runs. Yeah. And and it's also like just um, the... Not like, I, I can say that in a very good way, I'm not really hyped to play for now because I'm so content. With how Shadowbringers ended, that I'm like, yeah, I'm going in on five point four. It's, it's uh, yeah, I'm, sure, sure, you know. And yeah. then because I don't think it can get any better than this, 
Um, I, I was also like when when Enderwalker was coming out, which is the newest expansion. Yeah, the last one after Shadow Rangers. Yeah, I, I I played that one on release, and when it was coming out, I was like, you know, I don't really I don't really need this fucking game. Nah, I don't need Enderwalker. I mean, it's cool, and yeah, and and you know, you kind of do need it because it actually has to finish the story at some point. Yeah, but I'm like I I. I got my fucking video game highs. Yeah. I'm I'm actually kind of good. So now I'm just along for the ride just to see what the fuck happens. Yeah. So and and that is a feeling I haven't had in a very very long time where like I'm so I I'm so you know a lot of the tension while watching uh, a movie. Yeah. It comes from uh, oh man, I hope I hope the movie doesn't become stupid at the end. Mm-hmm. I hope I hope it sticks the landing. Yeah. And Final Fantasy fourteen has stuck the landing so many times. I was like, oh, I don't care if it's badly written. I'm no. just along for the fucking ride. Yeah. At this point, it can be whatever it wants. I'm gonna enjoy it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see where it goes, and I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna like it if it's good, and if it's not, I can be like, well, Shadow Rangers is better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like and and. and that's also kind of the beauty of FF14 is that even though there will be a lot of extreme lows at some points, Hildebrand, um, uh. and and some things that really just really turns your interest uh, interest level all the way down to zero, there will always be things that will considered uh, that will be considered like some of the most perfect things you experience in a game. Okay, so a couple of um, no, maybe even bookmark this and uh, in the video itself. Yeah, there's a couple of things. If you want to get into Final Fantasy XIV, yeah, this is what you do. You choose a um, either a tank or a very physical DPS. Yeah, that's the first thing you do as you start a class. Something fast paced. Something fast paced. Either a, either a tank or a physical DPS. Yeah, and then uh, skip the cutscenes that aren't voiced. Yeah, if the cutscene doesn't have voice acting, you can skip it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Yeah. Um, always ask if you if you wonder because there's many things left and explained to people that really needs to be explained to them. Yeah. Like what a trial series is. Now people know that. Uh, do your blue quests. Yeah. There's a couple of quests in there. You don't have to use. You don't have to do the, the side quests except for if they are blue with a little plus mark on it. Yeah. Uh, so okay. What do we have now? We have, we have play a tank or a physical DPS. Yep. Um, skip all the unvoiced cutscenes. Yep. Always ask if you wonder, and uh, use uh, do all the blue plus uh, side quest. Yeah, that's how you unlock everything. Yeah. Um, and then after uh, when you get to Heaven's Word, watch every cutscene. Yeah. And. If you don't, I will. I will say if you don't like it, by the um, okay. So, so uh, actually, Heaven's Word is all this content, the Realm Reborn, and up to Heaven's Word is free. Yeah, Heaven's Word included. Yeah, yeah, it's free to play. You can play for as long as you will, as long as you want. No, no, you need to renew your month. No, no, there's no restrictions on it. You can actually just play it, but you won't have all the features. No, okay, yeah. So you can, you can just, you can. Just jump off, jump on, jump off. Mm-hmm. Uh, Heaven's Word is included and in all the passions. No, I think you need to pay because I, I paid monthly pretty long time before I bought the full game. Yeah, but that's because or else you couldn't have joined the, the guild. Oh, is that why? Yeah, okay, okay, that's yeah. Why. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of like social stuff. You can't, you can't access the social stuff if you haven't paid it. Mm-hmm. But it's fine. If you just care about the story and are actually... And, are actually invested in it, then just follow the story along up until if you don't like the game after three point three, yeah, and you won't have you you spend a lot of time, not all, but no money, yeah. So if you don't like the game after three three, you can stop playing it. It's fine. The, then the game isn't for you, and you and I, I guess you won't get it. But yeah, but if you uh, if you really like the game after three point three, then you could buy it safely yeah 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 i would say so uh, i think that's around the time where i bought it as well I, everyone watched that final cutscene of 
3.3. Yeah. And then they bought the game. Oh, yeah, you're thinking about the, the trial cutscene? Yeah. Yeah, oh, everyone, God. Everyone saw that one. Oh, oh my God. I forgot yeah, how good it is. Yeah, I'm buying the shit. So, yeah, and just remember, I, I really recommend that you, you guys try this out. Path, Bracket, Sanchinobi, you know who we're talking to. Yeah. I really recommend that you, you, you try this out. And, and just remember, if you ever feel fucking bored to death, I was even more bored than you. Use that as some sort of like a, a, a gesture to keep going. Hey, I hated it more than you. Yeah, use a hey, at least you're not playing Black Mage. Yeah, hey, at least you're not playing Black Mage. And and just press on because you, I know, I, I'm pretty sure that all of you will have the same euphoric experience as I did in the last trial of Heaven's Word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when the game Fucking just pops off. I mean, if you like that, because you're writing your own book. Yeah. And if if you if you like uh, uh, Nick's writings about yeah. Galder and and uh, the whole university he made there. Oh. If you like that, if you like that shit, the AI dungeon shit, you're gonna love Heaven's Word. Yeah. Basically, yeah, basically. Thank you for the plug as well. But yeah, if you if you have liked the AI dungeon stuff and and the book on Breton and the medieval uh, medieval warfare uh, writings and fantasy tales you will find heaven sword right up your lane yeah at your local game store i almost said but they don't no yeah. you could you could just go to the website and just download it for free yeah and just play it right now if you want yeah do it right now um remember remember the five rules remember five rules let's go through them once more okay use a tank or a physical dps uh skip Cutscenes that aren't voiced until you get to Heaven's Sword and then watch every cutscene. Don't be afraid to ask players uh, if there's something you're in need of. Uh, I mean, I that is it. Uh, the blue quests. Play the blue quests. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. Um, um, well, I mean, if you if you join, if you listen to this, if you listen all the way through and, and join, you can, I mean, just put a comment. Down yeah. below and I can just add you on fucking yeah do stuff. that so we can uh, go through the trial series together yeah and uh, we we are really not shy to to introduce people to this and do the fun things over with people who has an experience oh it's super fun I do it all the time yeah it's really fun um and and we really recommend it but whew, okay maybe we should let ff14 on the shelf for now oh, that's a pretty good uh pretty good introduction pretty good introduction in one and a half hours <laughs> yeah so ff14 on the shelf um and uh, brother is unbreakable back on track yeah yeah so uh yeah this would be the 2.0 then <laughs> this is oh. the 2.0 yeah oh, the podcast is yeah. brotherhood reborn brotherhood reborn is a, a podcast reborn and a um, podcast reborn i feel yeah that's a fitting name for yeah. the for the whole um, the whole um, episode we've yeah. done here season two of podcasting was, you said that yeah All season right. this this is the season two and uh, the unofficial season two um no we'll, wait i have a better one i okay. have a fucking better one okay yeah the, the norwegian podcast yeah that's the Yu-Gi-Oh season zero. <laughs> oh yeah this is season one this is season one <laughs> yeah fuck you the oh, other yeah. shit didn't happen oh god damn yeah we play yeah. a children's no, no, card no. game now yeah. motherfucker the norwegian the, the norwegian uh, podcast yeah, that didn't ever happen it was just a it was just an unofficial prequel. It was 1.0. Yeah. It was, it was 1. nuked, 0. and now it we're in the rubber board. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Now we're. This is the game. This is the podcast you get. Yeah. <laughs> this is you can access. The, you can access the old one. It's pretty fun, but you need to like have a whole Norwegian childhood to be able to laugh a bit. But there's there's uh, there's a lot of like hidden uh, hidden references you yeah. won't get if you're not Norwegian because I mean Norway is kind of a weird country and you know. To fully enjoy the Norwegian one, you have to one have had a childhood in Norway and two be our third brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, most people know about the brown cheese, and you're like ninety percent there. I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Um, so uh, I can't actually, wait. I can't wait for the next one. Me neither. Uh, I guess we're gonna go much into looser topics then. Yeah, Talk about small, how things are. Smaller topics. Yeah. Uh, more like current stuff. And, current stuff. Uh, I know you have some Silent Hill info going on. Oh God! Yeah, yeah well, well, we'll get into that. We have a little while. rant there, so that's uh, really good. I uh, I guess uh, there's always new things that will show up uh, here and there about things we can talk about. Yeah, we're like very interested in like uh, video games and animes and uh, all that nerd shit. Yeah, and for for the, the, those who have followed me a long time and know about my book, 
and you don't know this either. Oh. We're in Shinkensu now. Oh. Yeah. So now you're in Stormblood. Now I'm in Stormblood, yeah. yeah the the okay. book I'm in Shinkensu, I'm way over the halfway point, over reaching a conclusion. Dude, Hopefully. I feel like Shinkensu is the halfway point. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah maybe in the book version, maybe it's more like the there, halfway point. There's so much bullshit happening, and you like yeah. you you stretch that shit out. Yeah, I I did, and and I guess I'm gonna stretch this shit out even longer. The things that will happen later. It's pretty cool. Um, but no way. so that's really really nice. I, I hope to get in contact with a publisher after I've done it. I really want this you book could, to. You actually. could just self publish. That's if you that's want true. To. If I if I mess with the publishers, I'm gonna self publish. I think that's the plan here. Um, but yeah, every cool. character is basically settled and stuff like that. What have you been going on with, like, own projects and stuff? Do you want to get into that? No. Right? <laughs> okay. I think I did earlier when I said, like, yeah, I have super many videos. Yeah. Super, super many super good videos. Uh, not made and not written. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. Yeah. I do, I do post some art shit sometimes at the... Uh, at my Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Yeah. So follow me there. It's Spiham, S-P-E-H-A-M. Yeah. Uh, you can um, follow my daily daily life at uh, Nikolai Nilsen 01 on Instagram. It's a very Gen Z name. Holy fuck. I mean, it's a very Norwegian name. Very Norwegian. Um, this channel is called... Uh, Nini's Bizarre Adventure. And your Twitter is called... Galdervath. Yeah, because yeah. that's the old gamer name. Yeah, that's the old gamer name. Also, my my Galder is also my um, my name in uh, your OC. My OC and my name in Final Fantasy fourteen. That's true. So remember, if you log in there and want to join us, remember that my name there is Galder, and my last name there is the last name of uh, the the fourth JoJo. Yeah. So search up Galder, the fourth JoJo, and you got it. Galder Higashikata. Higashikata. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Should we? Should we? Put the uh, should we close the close the Realm Reborn book there? Yeah, like the I think we're, we're closing uh, closing the Final Fantasy book. Yeah, and can... the uh, nail in the coffin. Yeah, the nail in the coffin, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna play a good groovy song now that we're uh, done with the first first episode. Yeah, something way unrelated, unrelated would be funny, like BG staying alive. No, it would be copyrighted. Fuck, yeah, I can't do that. Sorry, we can do that. Okay. Uh, something way unrelated, like the heavens were. Oh, oh no! no.